Our history? Well, our history is long and, uh, you know, a lot of blokes forget about people that do the wrong thing and you're one of those blokes that I've never forgotten. And why? Do you want to share with me well, why? Well, you're a pollutant, you know. You're a, a pollutant? To yeah, you're a pollutant. You're a toilet-trained AFL jerk media journalist. That's all you are. You're Good a pubic hair. Good That's all you are. Mike, oh, let me tell you, explain. Anybody, after their father dies, after a tribunal hearing, right, and then blames you for bringing on the stress, do you reckon you'd have a nice word about any of these journalists? Did you wouldn't. I, did I say that? Well, listen, amongst other things, there was other things said and, uh, yeah. OK, let's talk about that. You've raised it. Your yep. father and Channel 7, when and where Lockett would be arriving at the hospital and gave permission to myself, Eddie Maguire, and Peter Donegan to interview the gun full forward. The only trouble was, no one told Tony. The result, what would have been a normal sports story turned into that night's lead news story and one of the most famous incidents in the game. I just went to the hospital expecting no one to be there. You know, I was a bit disappointed and a bit down in the dumps, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, Sure, we just wanted to ask you if you've spoken to your son at all. No, I haven't. And can you go and get fucked and get out of my life and out of my property and ring up and make a time like every other cunt does that's got any manners, OK? Thank you. With you blokes in the media, the Herald Sun would ring up for a stinking story, the Age would ring up for a stinking story, the Melbourne Truth would ring up and I'd tell you it's all lies. And that's all you deserve. Are you proud of that, are you? I'm proud of it, because it got me where I wanted to go. Did you have a hit list on, in your locker? Yeah, I did. You were on it. Yeah. You had a dozen people on it, didn't you? Oh, I had quite a few on yeah. it, yeah. What was written next to my name? You tell me. You said, I hope he dies of cancer. Oh, well, I hope he did. I, I, honestly, at that day, I, I really have got no respect for you. I couldn't give a shit. I hope he got cancer of the finger so he couldn't write another poison interview like he did, which had an effect on all their families. What was the poisonous interview? Oh, there's heaps of them, mate. No, 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 there's you've got too to many, mate. 20 years. You, give, you bring me in, right? You put me on the spot to give you the... To give you, what do you think? I save your rotten, filthy articles? Listen, mate, at the end of the day, you pull me out of the darkness for 20 years where you banish me, you and your cronies, for 20 years after building the foundation or being part of building the foundation of what is a great game, Australian rules football, but what, not the what, company game, AFL. What, you no. did, did you? Australian rules football. You, you helped. helped. You, did you? Helped. I played at the highest level. You, I helped. This is your, you played uh, in 82 games. Yep. No finals. Yep. Taking and you, suspensions. And you, and you played in 22 wins. Yep. And you got rubbed out every other week. Yeah. And you built the foundation of this game. I you? helped build because I played at that level. Do you understand what I'm saying here? I played at that level. I was part of it. Mm hmm. You never. Why did where you, were you? I didn't profess to play where, at that where, level. Where'd you play under nine eight and some dirty rotten grease up the pole at one of these media organisations and then you sit there, you sit there, you've got the gall to come and question me about my career and the blood and guts and the hours I put in at training? You're kidding me, are you? Well, so you, you're not entitled to be an observer if you've watched... Yeah, I've observer, watched games you've observer. As long as you don't, don't get personal in your interviews. Good and bad, Do I get no personal? problem. Yeah, you did. You did, many times. Why don't you explain yourself? If you're saying, if you're making these accusations... James Heard with us on AFL 360. How do you think that went? Not very well. Did you sit back in the grandstand there and go, oh, jeez, I feel a bit responsible for this? No, that, that's it. That, Gary, that is an ordinary comment. I'm that asking, the, I'm asking you a question. No, yeah, well, that's an ordinary accusation. It's not like an accusation, you have it's done, a question. Like you have done, like you have done, when you go down to the rooms, people ask your advice. You are not responsible for driving them when they're out on the ground. And in fact, I stand by the Hawthorne players. I was uh, very well, happy. I think you're out of line because what I saw, I saw some Dockers players go down off the ball. I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah. Remember as well, but yeah. did you have a message to your players in particular? What do you think? I don't know. You tell me, you're the coach. Well, I just think it's a silly question. Okay. We play within the rules. Yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Mine. Yeah. Shane. Shane who? Yes. Okay, that's the best question you can come up with after two hours of footy. You're quite brilliant. You've been around a long time, Mick. Uh, just the week you've had, uh, was it a tough one leading in? They're all tough. Any regrets at all about uh, what oh, happened? I'm sorry, do I, do I need to get a confession or something? Last no, question. Or have I murdered someone? No, not at all. No, I'm just saying thank, thank you. Thanks, Mick. We're still bemused and disappointed that we don't know exactly some of the things that are going on out there. But having said that, uh, the boys had a go. What do you What do you mean? What are you bemused at? What would you think I mean, Richard? What would you really think I mean? So, 
we're, we're going to lose our captain now with a facial break from a uh, uh, to the head. Uh, that's only one incident where we didn't get a free kick. But we just like to think that we get have an even play, playing field. Thanks for your time. I thought I thought there was far worse players last week than Brent Otten's playing the game. And uh, for some th some silly reason, you people want to assassinate him, and it's just rubbish. You people. All of you. All of you. It's just rubbish. This you asked me to come in here and, and, and speak truthfully. I don't have to get a value opinion from you on what you think. We're talking to the people out there, right? Let's take you out of it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you and answering you these questions honestly, for the not for you, Right, because I don't like you. Have I You've mentioned said that? that? You've yeah, said that a yeah, hundred right. times. I'm, I'm talking to the people out there in television land, right? So they know the truth, what happened. Mm. OK? OK. <laughs>Very subdued in the St Kilda rooms before we meet the coaches. We don't know how Mick's going to be. Obviously, he'll be very, very disappointed. Ross Limewell, we're not expecting too much more from Ross than what we usually get. It'll be lids on until they play again in the primary final. We'll talk to you after the press conferences. Were the players shell shocked after the game, Mick? With the in, you, you play a pretty intense brand of footy, but it always goes up that extra little bit more in the finals. Your players a little bit scarred after this performance. How do you rejuvenate them for shell shocked? Yeah, well, for they were four hundred thirty-nine touches to oh, two seventy-five. Well, uh, the, I think, Robbie, you got to if you're going to go by stats, you, you're surprised. Well, I'm actually talking about the game. I mean, yeah, they well, were. If you ask me the question, yeah. you want me to answer the question, yep. or you want to carry on? No. Ask the answer the no, question. no, I'm, I'm, but you, you mentioned stats. How do you rejuvenate this team? How do, how well, do you mentally get them back over this performance today? That's that's the art of the the individual and the and the courage of the individual. Now we're we're not going to be the first side that's ever lost a qualifying final, and you want to recover and you want to get back in there. We have got and 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 have earned the right because we finished in the top four to play another game. And that's, that's, that's incentive enough. Can you just talk to us about Nick Rewalt's game and Nick Rewalt's, especially his second, his second quarter? What did he kick? I think he kicked, kicked five, five goals, one. No, he, yeah, his performance no, in the, yeah. he did, his performance in the yeah, second look, quarter. Well, I just think, look, uh, club land, we, we focus on the team and the roles, and, and clearly Nick is a premier player for us, but continually you, you get put up and analysed and dissected and, and sometimes it's a little unfair and puts undue pressure on but but guess what that's AFL and that's the industry and he responded in kind today. Two weeks off now they'll be betting down at the St Kilda camp absolutely no doubt about Back that. Now watch this as he goes past David King bang just a little touch and uh, I'm not a bad lip reader and I think he wasn't saying uh, See you later, King. David King, of course, has been one of his most trenchant critics, yep. questioned him in recent times whether or not he actually possessed the shin bone of spirit. And I just think... Uh, you know, held back to us just a little bit on the way through. Well, I'm not sure of this. As he goes past David King, bang, just a little touch. And uh, I'm not a bad lip reader, and I think he wasn't saying... Uh, See you later, King. David King, of course, has been one of his most trenchant critics, yep. questioned him in recent times whether or not he actually possessed the shin bone of spirit. The, that the Richmond guys had got ahead of themselves. The oh, seriously, I'd love to see Kane. I'd love to. I'd really love to see Kane. Yep. Don't get me wrong. That's his job. Sure. He's there to write <laughs> comments. Really, it shouldn't be done. Yeah, End of story. You're the media journalist, so you figure it out. No, how does it impact <laughs> the club, though? Next question. No, how does it impact Next the question. No, 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 Thanks, Tony. No, no, no. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, mate. Give me a straight. Uh, thought that you handled the fallout from that stuff from the couch last week with remarkable coolness. Did it get up, did it get up your nose? <laughs> it uh, seemed a little bit different to the words I just had with you before, yeah. you suggested. <laughs> Precious. Yeah. Oh, listen, yeah. I just thought it was out of line. I thought you, I think you're better than that as a journalist. Um, uh, you, know, you and I have known each other for a long period of time um, and I reckon you put your journalism above our friendship because it's so far from the truth it's not funny. If he wants to coach... Chris, commiserations. I've, 
obviously after a very good season. What was your key message? Sorry, to, after a... Obviously, well, very good season overall. What was your message to the players just then? Oh, it's private. Um, we're disappointed. Sorry, what's that? OK. Um, Talk us through the events in the last few days with a few players, JJ, Martin, Lockie Hunter, you know, in and out of the team. Melbourne was similar as well. Is that just normal round one preparation to you know, be uncertain, I guess, at how you're going to prepare? You've got the nerve to ask me a question and even be here. So you've been preying on us the last two times. You barracked for Melbourne, Tom Morris. Been preying on us. You've been opening us up, causing turmoil within our football club by declaring our team um, well before it needs to be declared. Is that the way Fox want you to oper operate? Yeah, is that I'm what you're doing? Is that the gutter journalist you want to be? No. Is I'm, that is that who you want to be? You let me answer, right? Luke. So, yep. so we went in with a plan. We had we had some late stuff go on with JJ, um, unfortunately coming out in the warm up. Everything other than that was according to pl plan from the Sunday, which somehow you found out about again. Yep. So we need to get to the bottom of this. Obviously, we need to put our hand up and and say that there's. Uh, there's some leakage going on, but you're preying on it. And and it's a team you barrack for. Your conflict of interest here is considerable. And yet your gutter journalism at the moment is killing our, us and behind the scenes. This is why the health and well-being of people in the game is caught up in all this stuff, you know, because we've got things to concentrate performance -wise, concentrate on performance-wise. We've got to look after our own. And then you cause all this... Um, muck raking trash that happens behind the scenes and names get brought up into it and all we're doing is planning for a football game. I can't... Are you proud of yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're proud of yourself? Yeah, Fox backs me. Wow. Well, and to be honest... To be honest... Today. No, 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 that's enough. That's enough. Next question, please. Um, yeah, next question. You, you, mate, you, you're not welcome. Right? No, no, this is the AFL's press conference and I'll it's sit what? here. It's the what? The AFL's right? press conference. Yeah, OK. Well, well I think you've got enough boys and girls. You got, I think we're probably done, aren't we? OK, so this is what happens, because I know, um, and I know Sam Edmund does it, you know, I know many of you, Roll, I know you'd do it. If you found something out, you'd ring Adrian Shed and say, look, I know this, just so you, you, you know that I know. Um, something's happened, it's got out. And the courtesy and the integrity uh, and the ethical way to go about it has happened in the past. Now, this bloke here, and what he's doing, he's giving everyone else a bad name, you know, and, and right where we're trying to stabilise our competition and what we do with everything that's gone behind the scenes and us, you know, as coaches and a football program um, with this, the soft cap situation as it is and, and this sort of stuff happens. You're an embarrassment to what you do, mate. You're an embarrassment. An absolute embarrassment.